Now, last weekend, Lewis and Clark went up there. In fact, uh, sitting right next to me in the in the studio, wants to congratulate you, Chris Hillage is the Lewis and Clark football head coach. Yeah. Well, Chris has done a fantastic job uh, of of really, you know, reinvigorating Lewis and Clark football. And uh, you know, I know there was times uh, before Pacific got back that there were some hard times, and and he's just done a fantastic job of recruiting and and. Uh, reinstilling confidence in that program and is, is somebody we can emulate and uh, moving forward as a program. Thanks. Thanks, Keith. And congratulations to you and the team. That, that was a, that was a great to see that score. I appreciate it. And I, I wish you the best as you, uh, you play these next two weeks. Yeah, let me ask you too. Let me ask you this guys. Now you have video from your win over PLU. Is that something you guys share or is that something Keith, you would get online? How does it work nowadays with technology and the internet on sharing video? It's uh, I, I had their game uh, about an hour after it finished, and uh, it was one of the first things I watched Sunday morning when I got back into the office, and and uh, we we basically see everybody's uh, contest now. It's an open library that uh, gets exchanged over the internet, and uh, we we get to see everybody now. Hey Keith, how good's Linfield this year? Well, Linfield is. <laughs> I'm you know, sorry, I had to bring that until, up. They're the top until somebody unseats them. And uh, you know, he's that, he's always got to bring Winfield up at least once in a conversation. It's pretty good. Absolutely, I've yet to have one that uh, that he hasn't. But well, you know, it's it's a well deserved uh, place for them. They've done it for over fifty years, and uh, I know uh, Chris and myself and everybody else in the conference is is aiming to take them uh, take them on. And you know, we're we're in it to get to that level, and I and I know Chris is in it to get to that level too. So. Uh, they are the, the, the top right now and, uh, you know, would, would love to see somebody, uh, knock them down, but, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see. They, they played a great game against us and, uh, really ended up beating us on special teams early, uh, with a, with a block punt and a kick return for touchdown. Well, you know what guys, uh, I know that Scott Carnahan out there and Joe Smith, I mean, they love a competitive Northwest conference. There's nothing better than great games and great rivalries and, uh, uh, I, I think it's fantastic, Keith, that you guys are on your way. Once again, congratulations, and uh, hey, uh, we'll be looking forward to, to many, many wins out in Forest Grove in the near future. I appreciate it, Ron. Thanks for having me on. Keith Buckley, football coach at Pacific, and since Chris is here, when we come back, the Pioneers are 7-0 and for the first time since when, Chris? <laughs> you know, I, I don't look. I think it's 1963. or, or it's, it's been, been a it's, while. It's been a little while. Before but, I was born, actually. I know that. Well, I know what. We're going to talk about this fantastic season for the Pioneers next on AM860. Time. Time for the Northwest Sports Tonight Sports Flash. Brought to you by Hungry Howie's Pizza. Uploading now. And go. Monday Night Football on ESPN, and it's uh, been pretty much a battle of field goals. Just one touchdown in the game, courtesy of Kansas City. Right now, it's in the second half, 13-12. to It was 13-3, to Kansas City, but the Chargers slowly coming back, courtesy of uh, field goals. And they're kind of an underachieving team, San Diego. But maybe Kansas City has finally got their act together after a slow start, because they were a playoff team last year. But right now... Uh, Fourth quarter, 12.20 to go. It's 13-12. to 12. Kansas City, though, looks like they've just scored a touchdown. Let's go live and uh, catch it. Albert with less enough of a block, but LaRon McClain had the big block to get battled the five yards and a first down. First and 10, Kansas City at the San Diego 19. Bring your hammer to the line of scrimmage. 13-12, Chiefs. Battle stays in. Offset out of the weak side, which is the left. Now they run a counter to the right side. Battle at the 15. Yeah, Jackie Battle. He really gets hyped. That's the Chief Radio Network. That's Sports Flash brought to you by Hungry Howie's Pizza. Check him out online, HungryHowie's.com. Ron Callen on this Halloween night. And uh, I'll tell you what, I've got a guy dressed as a football coach in here. Lay it on the line until the final whistle blows. And if you do that, you cannot lose. It is your time. It is your move. Go take it. No man. Is more important than the team. No coach is more important than the team. The team, the team, the team. It's time for the Coach's Corner, brought to you by H&B Jewelry and Loan. 
Check out the short-term loan option on hbloan.com. Indeed. And it's not a costume. He is a football coach at Lewis and Clark. Chris Hologis joins us. And uh, congratulations, Chris. 7-0, and uh, the Lewis and Clark Pioneers. I think the first time you came in here was like your 4-0, and maybe. Hang on, let me get your mic on. Go ahead. Yeah, three or four. No, I can't. I really can't remember but, either. Uh, but uh, you, you keep rolling. Yeah, you're playing games where. Do you have any nails left on your fingers? Uh, I'm losing hair, and my goatee is definitely <laughs> almost solid gray. Because sure. uh, looking at the the, the uh, game so far this year and the schedule, I mean, you've won games by score. Well, you dominate Claremont by 21. You beat Pomona Pitzer by nine. You beat McAllister by nine. You you. Take care of Pacific with ease, but then a eight point win over Whitworth, a three point win over Puget Sound, and last week you go on the road up to Parkland, Washington, to um, PLU. Always a tough place to play. PLU with a fantastic football tradition in the Northwest Conference, and you pull out a thirty four thirty two win to get to seven and zero. Tell us about the game. Um, you know, it was it was, a, it was a great game all the way through. We we got down early, fourteen nothing, and uh, um, had a our worst quarter by far, and then we got a little bit better in the second quarter. Um, but really, our sec- second half, we came out and our guys uh, really competed. We had some big plays, big interception, a couple by um, Lamar Curry, one of, one of our corners, and stopped a couple of, and a fake field goal. And uh, we made some big plays and came back and really turned on, scored 20 points in the fourth quarter to go up. So that was, that was, that was a fun game to, to be at. So. You're undefeated. Yep. You're on the road, and you're down 14 to nothing. What's going through your mind? Because obviously there's a long way to go. But, you know, I mean, here's a situation where, well, how good's PLU and how good are we? And obviously you showed that you guys can get strength through adversity and you showed a lot of character. Yeah, our guys showed a lot of character. And that, that was kind of a big test. Like you said, it's a, you know, top 10 Division three program in the country over the years, that, you know, easily maybe even top five traditionally. Mm-hmm. And to go on the road and, to be down fourteen nothing, and then all of a sudden to see our guys rally a little bit um, was was a big thing. Especially you know defensively, um, we gave us some some quick easy scores first two drives, and then they they tightened up really good and started playing. And the offense got the ball going a little bit more, and and uh, went in halftime. And our guys understood what what happened in the first half, and we had to go. Uh, we talked about we played that was our worst half we played all year, and we got to go play our best half now. In that locker room at halftime, are you um, a, a passionate speech guy, or is it pretty much, <laughs> hey guys, you know what you got to do? Let's go get it done. Um, you know, we have some pretty good senior leadership, and those guys were they were kind of saying what I was going to say already. But um, you know, I, I kind of I'm, I'm sometimes I am, and sometimes I'm not. It just depends on our team. We have an old enough team where you know we just talk about real stuff and, and t- talk to them about what's going on and what we need to do to go go win this game. Thirty four twenty six, you have the lead. And then they score a touchdown to make it 34-32. Yeah. A two-point conversion to tie the game. What happened? Um, actually, to get that touchdown, we they got they were first and goal inside the five. First of all, we got them to fourth down. and um, So goal line stand was going on. Goal line stand was going on. Our, play, our guys are they're playing with their hearts, and it was good. So they, 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 they sneaked one in a little bit there. And then uh, um, the two-point conversion, Chuck Krause made a great play on our one of our safeties. And... Uh, Tipped the ball away and and um, stopped them on that two point conversion. Then they came out to onside kick it, and um, Chris Kelly, one of our guys, actually recovered it, but returned it for another twenty twenty five yards. Thought he was gonna nice. I was yelling to go down because we wanted the clock. No to stop, fumble, no fumble. That's right, that's right. But um, then I said, I saw him. I was like, hey, go score <laughs> if you can go score. But um, it was a, uh, it was you know we made some big plays like I said, and it was exciting, very exciting. Chris Lodges is our guest. He's the head coach of the Lewis Clark Pioneers. What does this season meant for you and the players and the program and the reputation and everything. Um, it's, I think it's meant a lot for for all the things you said from you know alumni to administration to our players. You know, our, some of our guys are you know their first year they were zero and nine. You know, and now they're 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 you know uh, redshirt seniors and now they're you know they're seven and zero right now, which is which is pretty impressive. But you know, the biggest thing is you know I see is more of um, I think it's it's a it's a good good. Good feeling on campus. It's a good thing for Lewis and Clark College. Um, you know, see more faculty and, and and our guys intermingle a little bit more. It's just a good feeling. You know, the start of the year. You know, with a with a football program doing that, and our couple other sports are playing really well right now. Volleyball. You know, they upset some people recently, and it's just exciting exciting to be around. You had homecoming a couple of weeks ago when you beat UPS, but uh, you have another home game coming up on Saturday. Yep. 
and the Willamette Bearcats. And when you think about teams in the Northwest Conference that have had a uh, winning tradition, then Willamette's one of them. Definitely, definitely. Especially, you know, you know, recently they've been won the conference a few years ago and got in the playoffs and semifinals. And Coach Speckman does a great job down there, and they have a great program. And they probably have one of the uh, – they might have the hardest Division three schedule this year. I mean, they, obviously they played Portland State. And uh, it's pretty- yeah, I, and I don't. I didn't see the game. I don't know how much you know how when Portland State pulled the the first string, but uh, thirty six to ten, respectable score. It, it definitely was. It definitely was. And um, you know, it, it, they did a good job of uh, showing Division three football a little bit to the to the bigger guys. Mm-hmm. And um, it's it's for real. And, and would you consider a game like that in the future? <laughs> That's a great question. Probably if you're AD, right? Yeah, no, no. Yeah, no, it just depends. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that, that depends on it. But, um, yeah, but we're excited about this week. You know, we, it's, a, it's a rivalry game for us. We actually play for a big a wagon wheel trophy. Team who team wins gets that wagon wheel. And, and we're just, like we said, we're, like we talk about every week with the team, we're preparing for this week, and, and this is the week we're preparing for. We're not doing anything different. Um, That's what gotta, you got to do. Got to do it. And then uh, our guys are ready to go. So, Would you have any words of wisdom for – Mike Riley as Andrew Luck comes to Corvallis this week. I know you're a football fan. I know you know all the players and coaches down in Corvallis a little bit. What about, I mean, coming off a tough loss like that to Utah, I don't know if you had a chance to see any of that game but because yeah, uh, you're involved it, in your own game. But uh, Andrew Luck, how good is this kid? You've seen a lot of quarterbacks. Is he the best, Chris? I mean, you've seen a lot of quarterbacks at all levels as a, as a football fan and a yeah, coach. Yeah, he is, I mean, that kid, he not only, I mean, big, can throw, and he can run. I mean, he's kind of the all-around package, and and he's he's real good leader, all that stuff. So he's he's good. And uh, to give Coach Riley any advice, I, I <laughs> I'd say it'd be hard to give him any advice. Keep him off the field. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, you keep can, the ball right. Yeah, if you can keep the ball and get some get some long uh, drives put together, keep him off the field. That's a pretty good thing. A couple of turnovers, fumbles. You never yeah. know. That's yeah. what that's why college football is my favorite. I think it's my favorite sport. People ask me that all the time. What's your favorite sport? College football, college basketball, and then baseball, Major League Baseball. And well, then, well, NFL, I mean, I like them all. That's why I'm here, I guess, doing exactly, this show. Exactly, me too. D3football.com uh, is a website, kind of a Bible for D3 sports as far as keeping up on what's going on. Uh, we had one of their um, executive director on last week, Pat Hamilton, oh. and I asked him, well, how come Lewis and Clark has kind of been ignored in the poll? Because you're not in the top 25, although you're 7-0. and Although this week he got votes which I'll give credit because I, I always think there's a little bit of an East Coast bias because there's so many more D3 schools back East. I mean, the Western Conference includes schools from Illinois. Right, and Wisconsin and Yeah, and so, so on, you're going, so. you know, what, what's, you know, what's fair? But there are fewer schools out here. That was his determination. There just aren't enough schools out here. Yeah, no, there's, there's not very many schools. It's basically two conferences, uh, Northwest Conference and the Sky Act Conference in Southern California that are truly on that the West Coast. That should be the Coast. West. That should just be the West bracket. Right. But that's my, my West Coast bias, probably. But to, to at least get some votes and some recognition, they're talking about you on the website. That Does that mean a lot? No, it, it means a lot. I know it means a lot to, to our players. And, and like you said, the, the Midwest East Coast bias is amazing. All the, all the NCAA, all the playoff committees, all the stuff, mm-hmm. everything that happens, even on D3Football.com, oh, yeah. they're all back there. So for them to, be, for them to recognize us right now is, is, a, is a big deal. Chris, hey, appreciate you coming by. Good luck against Willamette this week. I know you have Coach Speckman. He'll be ready for you. They'll be but ready. But you got him on home, so uh, good luck to you guys. Thank you very much.